What is up guys, Wrestling Premiere is here. Oh yeah, the often overlooked storyline. On paper, it seems like something that would be terrible, but ended up being one of the most entertaining and standout storylines of the year and in all three parties' this career. Matches, good to great. Segments, entertaining as hell, and I can't see anything bad. I'm not gonna waste your time with the intro. Let's go back to a time when the moniker CLB began to exist. So at this point in time, Christian and Chris Jericho were mid-card mainstays. Y2J had main evented WrestleMania but was relegated to the upper mid-card and was an occasional main eventer. Christian had ditched the long locks in favor of a new look and was finding success capturing the Intercontinental Championship twice within three months. Both men were tag team partners on and off capturing the titles, embarrassing themselves in odd segments, and overall were ass clowns. While Christian Kayfabe was wasn't on the level of Y2J, he slowly rised up the ranks and was becoming a notable name on Raw. He wasn't no notable, he wasn't no Goldberg, but there was a nice place for him. Suddenly though, those two friends made a huge bet that ended up fracturing the friendship. Alright, let's explain how it got to that point. On the October 13, 2003 episode of Raw, Chris Jericho randomly came in and checked on Trish Stratus, who had been attacked. This was about as random as Lance Storm's gimmick at the time, because in the past those two were always trading insults left and right, and it came right out of the blue. I loved how the crowd expected him to assault and were silent, that would quickly change. Jarrah was confused, Trish was befuddled, and Y2J was looking like he developed some sort of love interest. On that whole incident, Trish felt that it was to stick it to Stone Cold, but despite this, she thanked Y2J who responded saying it wasn't even about Austin. He actually respects Trish. Awkwardness enters the room, and in other places, Christian, who was straight out of Zoolander, ran in and saved Lita. It was extremely similar to the Chris Jericho incident, and again, this left Jarrah and King shocked. Clearly, this didn't go over Trish and Lita's head because they weren't stupid. Jericho was starting to call Trish on the phone, and Lita grew suspicious of this because the two did the exact same thing at different times. Captain Charisma, though, claimed that he read her book, mentioned how they were close friends in the past, but she wanted to keep it in the past. Nonetheless, he continued pushing her buttons, checking on her after getting blasted with a wrench, and as he's leaving, he had a little smirk on his face, like he's in. Chris Jericho, on the other hand, was on much better terms compared to Christian. He got Trish's number, was worried over her well-being, and slowly but surely, she was changing Y2J for the better. But he was suddenly switching up his demeanor and gained enough confidence to shoot his shot and ask her out. She accepted and both parties were absolutely joyous. With regards to Christian, he used the Survivor Series here to bring back Lita. This good deed did not go unnoticed at all. Now, long story short, Jericho managed to convince Bischoff to book a tag match featuring Lita and her returning boyfriend Matt Hardy. Eric Bischoff added a crucial stipulation, you know, if Lita loses, she's off Raw, and Trish Stratus felt that he was somewhat responsible for this. But he smooth talked his way out, telling her that he couldn't stop thinking about her, and even got a kiss in. Man was doing very well at this point, but it all came crashing down for them, both men, the following week. So initially, it seemed like Jericho was going to get lucky that night. He teamed up with Trish in a mixed tag match, and they obviously won it. Christian and other places faced Matt Hardy. Lita washed on the ringside, and she ended up getting attacked by Molly Holly, and Matt stole the victory. Nonetheless, Christian was in there with Lita and was feeling very confident about winning a bet. Jericho disagreed, but Christian saw right through his words, knowing very well that he's into the hugs and kisses. He, of course, denied this and mocked her. The bet itself was about who nails the girl first, and it was for one Canadian dollar. That's all. And there she is. She had even made him a Canadian jersey, but it was all for nothing. Those two ended up realizing the errors of their ways because immediately when Raw began the following week, the two ass clowns came out ready to beg for forgiveness. Christian said that from the bottom of their hearts, they hoped that Trish and Lita aren't angry. Jericho was saying that he was heartbroken over the lack of communication and wanted to make up for it. Those two came out all angry, they're seething, and wanted to j question the whole thing, and so Trish brought up the Canadian dollar. YSG of course said that it was a joke and completely downplayed the whole thing, and he tried to smooth talk his way back in. Not only that, but he also spoke on Christian's behalf, trying to get Lita to see things from their perspective. He begged Trish to accept the apology, and his efforts were denied in a huge way. Those two took an ass kicking, and this was right before their tag title match. Trish and Lita did not walk to the back, instead opting to observe the match from a close distance, and ended up going for a wasa, which ended up costing them the titles. They whined about what went down, and all Bischoff could think of was the bet. Nonetheless, he booked a tag team match for Armageddon. Christian and Chris Jericho against Lita and Trish Stratus battle the sexes. Christian was so damn ecstatic over the idea, while Jericho was the complete opposite. Jericho wasn't quite happy with this match, and it showed. Every time he tried to say something, he was quickly interrupted, but despite this, he still went out there and had the match. Jericho tried to put a stop to this before it even began, but failed miserably. Suddenly, he's like, screw it, you know what, I'm gonna wrestle. Fan involvement was probably at a high during this match, you know, they were really, really, really into the match, they are cheering on the woman, the guys were getting booed, all that. Christian was opting to have Lita fight him, he provoked her and only got humiliated in the process. The heels actually took a lot of punishment, 
Trish and Lita had more offense than a bunch of the guys on the roster. And there was a chance there for the woman, but then Chris Jericho tossed Lita into the barricade and in a way spared Trish Stratus from a beating as Christian stole it with a roll-up. Eric Bischoff loved that matchup so much that he decided to have them go at it again the next night on Raw. And yes, Chris Jericho was much more unhappy with the way things were. Captain Charisma, of course, was enjoying himself, and it's not like Jericho was all goody two-shoes, nah. He, of course, brought the fight when it came to Lita. In the end, Christian hit a rough-looking on Prettier that would have ended the match, but Chris pulled him away and called for the ref to ring the bell. Christian got in his way, and he's shoved. Eric Bischoff was, of course, fuming because he hates baby faces and shouted, and shouted, and shouted. Jericho grabbed that mic and told him to shut the hell up, and the fans of course were loving it, and he revealed that Bischoff's got the meshes for a week now. You know, he did not want the match to go down because of the repercussions. Now look at what went down, see? Jericho said that he hopes Eric is satisfied before calling him an SOB. Of course he made it seem like the match was for Chris, but because he doesn't want a match with the girls, he's got Kane tonight. Fast forward to the second hour, Jericho decides to check on Trish, who could care less as she knew who the real Chris Jericho was all along. As expected, Kane mauled him, but he had a little trick up his sleeve. He got himself disqualified, and didn't lead to much though, and the big monster choked him with a wire before hitting a choke slam. Christian came in to check on his friend, at least that's what it looked like, because he ended up shoving Jericho. The friendship at face value was fractured. Christian, he said himself that at the core, Jericho ditched him for a girl. Even though it seemed like the relationship was never going to be fixed, Y2J still put in effort. He brought Trish a gift, but at the end of the day, she still didn't want to accept his apology. To him, she was apparently worth one Canadian dollar, which is 75 cents US. And to think, she actually liked him. Matter of fact, she didn't blame Jericho, rather herself, for actually believing he was a good person. Christian, on the other hand, actually apologized to his buddy, and all was good on their part. Matter of fact, Captain Charisma got them a tag match for that night. As expected, they won that match, putting their names in tab title contention, but Chris Jericho was getting more and more desperate. He gave out this heartfelt speech about being a jerk, how he wants to be a part of her life, but it fell on the wrong ears. Unless he ran in to save Stratus from an attack and in the process had his ribs destroyed. Because of that, he had to face Mark Henry in a matchup that made things worse, but on the positive side, it seemed like Trish Stratus was slowly coming back to Y2J. Captain Charisma, though, wasn't exactly proud saying that she was the one who cost Jericho the match. He wanted to take his friend out to party and have him completely forget about Trish Stratus. Jericho agreed with his friend, and they left. Stratus popped up at a very inopportune time, missing Jericho by just a second. From here, it was as though Y2J regained his previous form. He was actually winning matches for a change and was back on good terms with Christian. But then Captain Charisma selfishly asked Jericho to cash in that Survivor Series favor and put him in the Battle Royal for the number 30 spot. He made it seem like nothing, but Y2J wouldn't budge. You know, the Battle Royal was his chance to get back on top of the mountain and win the World Championship once again. Christian looked pretty disappointed with how things went, so he decided to talk to Trish Stratus. He claimed that Chris told him that he never wants to see Trish again before showing a bunch of pictures from their hangout. He knew that she still liked Jericho even though it was somewhat low-key. Like, yeah, I'm done with them. I never wanted to see him again, and he used it against her. The two buddies crossed past the Rumble. They worked as a team for a bit before Christian's ego got the best of him, and in the process, he screwed himself over. Also, I believe Jericho made it to the Final Four of the Rumble. He put in a good performance that fell short to the big show, if I remember correctly. Following the events of the Royal Rumble, Chris Jericho decided to cash in a Survivor Series favor in the best way possible. He was going to challenge Triple H for the World Heavyweight Championship. Since Benoit won the Rumble and presumably will face the WWE Champion, it left the Raw side wide open. Mans was very, very, very energetic, making political references and was back to being the old babyface Jericho. Bischoff, though, forced Jericho to make a crucial decision. First of all, he poked fun at the GM telling him that the crowd's chanting asshole, asshole right at him. Nonetheless, Bischoff said that Jericho's got his match with Triple H, but that means Trish Stratus is facing Kane. Now, we all know what he's going to do, right? It didn't matter to Eric that Jericho was the last remaining Raw star in the Rumble. Matter of fact, he was embarrassed by the lack of a Raw winner over the last few years. Also, he knew what Chris's decision was, which was to cancel the title match, obviously. Trish was more than thankful of Jericho's deed, but he felt that it was the least he could do after all that went down in the past. She seemed much more positive about the relationship before mentioning the F word, friends. WrestleMania main eventer gets friendzoned. Who would have thought that? She also revealed that Christian mentioned their little adventure the other day. Now... On the topic of Christian, he was the most logical man at this point. He said that Jericho was giving up a world title shot to save some girl who doesn't care about him. Y2J felt annoyed over the lack of support from Christian early on because he had gotten attacked by Evolution. Christian though managed to get a tag title match, but he wanted to know if Jericho was in. He wanted to know if he could focus for a few seconds or piss it all away for a teenage crush. He said, quote unquote, this is raw. Not an episode of the OC. Honestly, the storyline does remind me of the OC and One Tree Hill. Like, the former was pretty huge at the time. It was a cultural phenomenon, and I wouldn't be shocked to hear that they were inspired by it. With regards to that tag match, well, first of all, the CLB made his presence felt. 
He compared Trish and Jericho to the Beatles' downfall. And she didn't have much time to think much of this because she had a title match against Molly. Bischoff though canceled and instead brought in Kane. JR's in disbelief, Jerry Lawler thought this wasn't right, and just as Kane's got her for the choke slam, Chris Jericho made the save. For this, he paid the price as Kane rammed his knee directly into the post, and this would greatly affect his tag title match with Christian. However, he was ready to show his feelings, and just as he's about to do that, Christian interrupts and questions Jericho's heroic actions, telling him that they've got a title match tonight. After Captain Charisma shouted at Trish, Jericho stood up for her and told him to shut up and focus on the match itself. He knew what the stakes were for tonight. Christian didn't need to tell him anything. About that match, well, Jericho was expected struggled greatly with the knee. But despite that, YJ had Ric Flair tap into the walls of Jericho. Unfortunately for himself, the ref was too busy leading to a chop on the injured knee by Batista. This leads to the figure four and he taps. So technically, technically Christian was right. He screwed himself over by playing hero. Oddly enough, this was the same role that Christian played the following week as he contributed to a mixed tag team victory that left JR and Jerry Lawler stunned. And what's even crazier is the fact that Christian took a 180 stance telling Trish that there's no reason that they couldn't coexist before telling her that she looks really good tonight. One huge thing to mention is that Chris Jericho's knee was hurting, yet Bischoff booked him in a match with Kane. He was back to being on good terms with Christian and even revealed that his plan was to tell Trish that he wants to be more than friends. But he made a huge mistake by handing his friend the Rose. Jericho got hurt during that match and wasn't able to save Trish from Test. Instead, it was Christian. She was confused by this, as was Test, and it was looking obvious where this was heading. A few minutes later, she thanked him for the save before telling him that she's gonna go check on Jericho at the hospital. He was apparently planning on going as well and wanted to have Trish ride with him before he pulled out a rose and put his arm behind her back. He's trying to act like he's smoother than a Randy Orton match or something. But nonetheless, he wanted to team up with Jericho in a tag title match at WrestleMania 20. Eric Bischoff was furious and wanted to let out some of that anger by booking Christian in a match against Trish Stratus for later that night. He was in shock but managed to come up with a quick game plan in order to escape this match. He said that she should cover him 1-2-3, that's all. Then, he randomly threw the words, hang out before asking her, or you will no lay down for me. She was confused before he claims that she passed the CLT test, whatever the hell that is, which is apparently a test to determine if she was gonna two-time his friend. About that match, well, he decided, you know, I'm Hulk Hogan tonight and refused to lay down. She was pretty damn confused and decided to walk before he smacked her in the ass. Then he suddenly clotheslined her in the tower. Oh my God. It was one of the most ridiculous clotheslines I've seen. He then apologized before going for the walls of Jericho. No Chris Jericho in sight, obviously, because he was kayfabe injured. But rumor has it he performed to Fozzie, and the neat injury was a way of having him rest a little. Alright, the feud took a turn. Now they're no longer friends. They're heading on a collision course. On the March 1st, 2004 episode of Raw, the highlight reel was abruptly planned for the show. Jer was confused because Jericho hadn't been on the show in two weeks, and it's revealed to be CLB. He seemed anything but remorseless for last week, even though he knew damn well that it was rough. And then he revealed that he had Trish screaming rough in the hotel room, and funny enough, he's, not, he's probably not lying. He wasn't. Christian said that he did all of this for Jericho because Trish ruined their friendship. It's tough love in his eyes. And speaking of that, Christian revealed that he's got a match with Chris at WrestleMania 20. He mocked him with a never, ever, ever again thing before he actually emerged. Christian couldn't believe this and was on the receiving end of the attack. He managed to run out of there after kicking the bad knee. On the final Raw before WrestleMania though, Cat the Charisma struck. So Chris Jericho was speaking with Trish Stratus on the phone. And for the 10th time, just as he's about to tell her something, Christian makes an assault before grabbing the phone and telling Stratus that he left her boyfriend in the same position she's used to, flat on his back. And I don't know why this makes me laugh, but seconds later, he's shown running the hell out of there. Turns out he was lying and ended up interrupting Jericho's match with Stevie Richards, which ended up costing him the match. Clearly frustrated with how things went, Jericho assaulted him afterwards. And it's time. Now, the general consensus for the match at WrestleMania was that Jericho was winning. For some reason, a bunch didn't see Christian winning it, and to me, this match is often overlooked when talking about the great WrestleMania matches. This was two friends, guys that went through a bunch, including getting their towels taken away, embarrassing themselves all over the world, winning titles, were fighting it out over a girl. Like, deep down inside, Christian actually liked Trish. He also couldn't get over the fact that his friend was prioritizing somebody else other than him. It was Christian's first ever WrestleMania singles match, in my personal opinion, did wonders for his career. Like, if Jericho won this, he had nothing to gain, whereas Christian, it was a lot. YG had a nice jacket for the time period, matching with his iconic SVR 2006 tights, and he was pretty damn aggressive early on while Christian was much more methodical and dirtier in his approach. He targeted the neck. Jericho managed to put Christian down with a superplex when all of a sudden, Trish Stratus came out. It was her first appearance since that clothesline from hell, and Christian decided to put his hands on her. Jericho decides to check up on her, and she accidentally elbows him in the face, leading to the roll-up from Captain Charisma 1 to... So Christian was victorious. She repeatedly apologized and says Jericho liked her. I guess he forgave her. She tried pulling him away from Christian before slapping him twice. He was phased. JR was like, 
what the hell? And Christian hits the unprettier. So Jericho spends four months chasing a girl only to receive this. In kayfabe, Christian was right. He shouldn't have been going after a girl. To top it all off, they kissed. And I don't think many expected Trish to turn the way she did. He really came out of the blue and added a depth to Christian's sleaziness. It was a very good chicken heel at this point would continue to improve. Chris Jericho, on the other hand, suddenly turned the clock back to 2000 and was back to being the hilarious, entertaining version of himself that we all know and love. Trish Stratus became probably the best damn woman's heel of the decade, and she was superb as a heel in every way possible. Todd Grisham tried to get Y2J's opinion on what went down at WrestleMania, but he refused to give an answer. Instead, he let out all of his anger towards Matt Hardy. With regards to the new couple, it was revealed that they weren't on the show tonight. Turns out they lied and Spike Dudley was a victim. Trish was looking like she couldn't wait for this heel run. Jerry Lawler was shilling and Christian decided it's story time. This promo was excellent, as you know. Trish got called slow, slow, slow before saying it was Chris Jericho who made a bet to sleep with her for one Canadian dollar. True. And she's like, what kind of a cheap slut do you think I am? She said that it was pretty ironic that Jericho tried to screw her, but she wound up screwing him or in other words, screwing somebody else. Christian complained about the lack of respect from the millions of creepy bastards from New Jersey, and he refused to be identified with the CLB moniker because he actually got the girl. He also said that he tried warning Jericho multiple times. Trish wants somebody like himself, somebody that doesn't go around like a lovesick puppy with a rose in hand. She wants a rough and dirty man. Trish said that Chris couldn't get any satisfaction, and they continued where they left off from last night. Since Trish Stratus was a heel, I assume the marketing team wanted to do something interesting. I don't know who thought this was a good idea, but they had this damn t-shirt. It really leaves me speechless. Like, I don't know what to say about it at all. We get it. You're trying to call her a slut or whatever, but the t-shirt? Like, I can't see any sane person wearing this outside. Anyways, it took a while for Chris Jericho to respond. Exactly two weeks, when he hosted the highlight reel with his guest. Stratus herself. He admitted that they got him, but despite this, he's gonna get revenge. Not tonight though, cause Bischoff threatened to suspend him. She was all in her element mocking Chris, walking with a hell of a lot of confidence and Jared was calling her a Jezebel with two tongues. She continued provoking him mentioning Wrestlemania, and Trish finally gave her explanation. Apparently Jericho wasn't there for her. When she was facing Christian, he was out with a bum knee and the real man would have sacrificed his body for her body. Christian was there for her. When he knocked on her hotel room, she initially didn't want to talk to him, but he ended up being right in her eyes. Chris was going to use her, just like he, Chris, used Christian. That's when they made up their plans for WrestleMania. Crowd could care less, though, as they chanted slut. She even revealed that they smashed that night as well. He admitted that he knew where she was coming from, but he also called her the biggest slut of the century. All he did was put his foot in his mouth, which is nothing compared to what Trish has put in hers. The hell? Talking about how he blew it. She's the one doing the whole blowing around, and even mentioned Kurt Angle and you suck. He was grateful that she came here and opened up, because that's what she does best, and man, this promo is like the return of 2000 Jericho. He even said the whole filthy, dirty, disgusting, brutal, bottle-feeding, trash bag whole thing. He even let the crowd in chanting all of those words, and I assume it was the loudest they were that night. The crowd was deafening. She was tearing up as Christian's claiming he should have been there for her, and he promised to get Jericho at Backlash. They tried messing with him the following week, but failed miserably. Chris Jericho, though, succeeded in his efforts. During a number one contender's battle royal, Y2J came out to observe the match. Trish was too busy to deal with Chris, but once he got involved, Lita took advantage and eliminated her. She was fuming over this, but Christian said that she couldn't wrestle two matches at Backlash anyways because she's apparently in the tag team match. Trish, of course, wasn't happy about this because she was going to have to face Chris Jericho, but he assured her that he's going to do all the work. Y2J, though, was much more excited for the tag team match. He said that he had been crazy in this match since WrestleMania. He made too many chain references. Oh, they're going to be DOA, like DDP selling DVDs of the OC on QVC, something like that. And he said that Trish Straps will be wishing for some little vitamin C after he whoops Christian's ass. He felt that Trish shouldn't be so nervous in this match because it's not the first time she's in there with two men. And like she said, she likes it rough. Y2J chants intensify and he says that like a female dog, once a bitch, always a bitch. But moving on from female dogs and whatnot, Chris Jericho wanted to interview Lita. That never went down because Trish Stratus assaulted her leading to a one-on-one -on -one match between the two. Christian ended up making his presence felt in the way he shoved Lita. Wow, wow. This man had zero regard for anybody else. Jericho ends up attacking, whoops the CLB's ass, and almost locks his girl in the walls, but he makes a save. Trish got some shots in as well, and the crowd was rabid. They were lolly chanting for Lita to come out, which she never did. Christian ended up hitting two unprettiers, and the crowd still found some time to chance slut at his girl. But despite this, she ignored the chance and hit the chick kick. With regards to the tag, not a bad match at all. It was slowly building up to the encounter between Trish and Y2J. Christian was the middleman, you know, he's preventing a potential uh, encounter between the two. And Trish, on the other hand, was devious and intelligent and distracting Jericho, leading to Captain Charisma taking control. In the meantime, she got a spanking. This gave way to the unprettier. Trish is tagged him, but Jericho kicks out. She's in shock, so it's back to the apron. Y2J caught her with his clothes on that wowed the crowd, and at this point, it was anybody's match. Christian tried, but Jericho just caught him with the Enziguri to win it. 
despite this feud was far from being over. Matter of fact, the next night on Raw saw an addition to the ongoing storyline. So the two were going to face off in a rematch. Chris Jericho was getting a hell of a lot of momentum as the weeks went by. Jerry Law was in awe of Trish's hotness. The match itself was competitive. We had Trish interfere with a chip kick, but in spite of the interference, Jericho found his form. Then, she decides to stand on the apron. Christian fails to capitalize because his girl accidentally slapped him, and Taguri and Jericho's got this win. Not really, because Trish Stratus once again. She gets tossed in, and all of a sudden, this big bastard runs in and boots Chris, giving Christian yet another victory. A few minutes later, he introduced him as Trish's problem solver, and that's Tyson Tomko's debut. The following week, Captain Charisma decided to brag about beating his old friend at WrestleMania and how he took his little angel away from him. But despite this, Jericho's been a problem. Enter the problem solver. Christian was looking pretty damn ambitious at this point. He mentioned wanting the World Heavyweight Championship, and after beating Grandmaster Sexay, Chris Jericho's music played. Tomko marched towards the entrance, but it turns out Y2J was smart. He wasn't no ordinary babyface schmuck who was gullible, who was stupid, who was all kinds of things. He knocked down Christian and locked his girl in the walls, and they call him the problem solver. But it didn't make up for the following week. After Chris Jericho was left stranded alone on the highlight reel, Christian decided to appear. He talked about how Jericho made himself a problem last week, problem solver, yada yada yada, you know how it goes. Tomko ended up attacking and left Y2J with an injured shoulder. The other two obviously came in and got their shots in and the attack concluded with the unprettier. Because things were still heated between those two, three, or four people, Eric Bischoff announced a steel cage match between Christian and Chris Jericho for Raw's main event next week. Both men were certainly eager to end things on top because if you didn't know, this was basically the end of the feud. Not only that, but both men were looking forward to the World Heavyweight Championship. Christian was more arrogant, talking about how there's no concern on his part, and in his eyes, the cage match was essentially Game 7. Loser goes home, winner moves on to bigger and better things such as the World Heavyweight Championship. With regards to this one, it was the perfect way to end the feud. At least this iteration of it. The match was heated, violent, dangerous, and unfortunately for Christian, he suffered an untimely injury. Trish interfered, took the walls of Jericho, Tomko got knocked down, and I believe that's the moment Christian broke his back. That's the moment itself that left him out of action. Jericho locked in the walls of Jericho. He's eagerly trying to escape, trying to crawl out, but he fails, and instead, Chris Jericho emerged victorious. A very, very good way to cap off the feud. Y2J was back on top at this point. Fans were loving him, fans were enjoying him, and I'm kind of perplexed as to why he never got a one-on-one -on -one title shot. Like, what's up with that? It just felt like the right moment in my eyes. But anyways, that's the feud. Found this, they would have a little thing heading into Unforgiven. I'm gonna get into that real soon. But if you were here for the whole Trish Trash and Christian thing, this is basically the end. So the injury that Christian suffered on the May 10, 2004 episode of Raw was expected to leave him out for a week or two. Turns out he was injured for four months. Those four months leave me wondering what they would have done with him. Perhaps a feud with Shelton Benjamin, maybe even a match with Benoit and Raw, I don't know. But the feud between Jericho and Trish continued from here on. She clearly didn't want to move on, and at one point she caught Jericho's attention and used it against him as Tyson Tomko ended up powerbombing him through a table. Trish added insults to the injury by hosting a highlight reel, poking fun at last week, and insults to the crowd. Jericho had enough, and despite his rib injury, went for the fight. Trish for the hundredth time didn't read the room and almost took yet another beating, but the problem was solved. Tomko even press slammed Jericho directly onto a chair. Trish was still sticking it to him by sitting on the damn chair and in other places. Eric Bischoff booked the match between the two for bad blood. About that, it did not go Trish or Tomko's way at all. That did it though. You know, Trish Stratus finally got the memo and moved on. Tomko continued solving her problems and Jericho moved on to a small feud with Batista. Alright, fast forward to the August 30th, 2004 episode of Raw. At this point in time, Chris Jericho was eyeing Intercontinental Championship Gold. He hosted the highlight reel with the champion Edge. Unfortunately for Y2J, the champion came out injured. He didn't appreciate the fact that Chris was building up towards a rematch when he knew damn well that he was injured. Edge was receiving boosts from the crowd and Jericho decided to acknowledge how they did the same thing at SummerSlam. Y2J didn't think Edge was really hurt and he was expecting an attack, but the champion claimed he's got proof of an injury. He told Jericho that they will settle this when he returns. Suddenly, Christian makes his first appearance in nearly four months and attacks his old friend. He whooped him with a belt and whacked him with a chair before smiling at Edge. Kicking off Raw the following week, Eric Bischoff announced that Edge has been stripped of the title because he's not going to be able to defend it. Look at that beautiful title. Upon hearing this, Captain Charisma came out. First of all, he claimed that his peeps were going to be rioting if Bischoff didn't do the right thing and put the Intercontinental Championship on his waist. As expected, Chris Jericho disagreed with that statement. He thought Bischoff should decide who's champion the proper way with a match. He liked this idea except for the whole tonight thing. In his eyes, it's befitting of a pay-per-view. Y2J wasn't exactly worried and even suggested that there should be some sort of spectacular matchup. So Bischoff announced a cage match. Christian though didn't want the match in a cage because the last time he was in a cage against Jericho, he injured his back and he was left out of action for four months. He even said that if he was out, it'll kill his population. So Christian suggested a no count out match. Jericho's reaction says it all.
Man was essentially pissing himself over the thought of getting injured, but then Y2J gave out the best idea, a ladder match. Eric loved this idea despite his remorse for Christian, and it was on. It was officially booked for Unforgiven. Jericho then rammed the mic into Christian's head before going on the attack. He almost locked in the walls with Tomko made the save. He ended up facing Jericho later that night, and with the help of Christian, scored the W, and after the match, they attacked the ladder. Now about their ladder match, it was far and away the best match on the show. Beforehand, Christian argued with Trish over the problem solver services, and they compromised and allowed Tyson to choose. She managed to win things by asking him to visit her dressing room after the match, and Christian's like, she is a slut, and that's it for the relationship. Anyways, the match did have some decent spots. And while it fails to reach the level of their other ladder matches, it was still really, really, really good. Lights J even did the walls of Jericho atop the ladder, and in the end, he abruptly won it, winning his seventh Intercontinental Championship. A very enjoyable match. It's not as good as that RVD Christian match from the previous year, and I don't consider it to be the best match of this feud, but it wasn't a bad way to wrap things up. Overall, this feud was excellent. It's often overlooked for some reasons. I'm not saying it's underrated or anything like that, because it's not. It's not underrated. Whoever talks about it always speaks about it positively. But I just feel it deserves to be spoken about more. You've seen some long-term character development. You know, Chris Jericho, he started off this feud as this pompous, arrogant individual. And by the end of it, he was a gutsy performer who was challenging any and all comers. He was brave. He was, uh, he was energetic. He was exciting. He was all kinds of things. Everybody, one way or another, changed from this feud, including Christian. He was much more of a sleazeball by the end of it. Is much more cowardly. He just played that role very, very, very well. Trish Stratus, on the other hand, oh my god, she was amazing in that role. She had good promos, good performances as well, and she would continue this heel run with a feud with Lita, the whole title run thing with Christy Hemi and all that, and it was very good. My favorite match of the feud is probably the WrestleMania 20 match. I will say though, their steel cage match is objectively better. That match was a good way to end the feud on top. Okay, moving on. Uh, I'm going to make a Chris Jericho video real soon. It's going to be on his return in 2007. How he feud with JBL, how he won the IC title, all that. Because I want to remake that Chris Jericho and Shawn Michaels feud. With regards to Christian, I'm planning on doing something on his TNA run, of course. I want to talk about his second title reign, his feud with Rhino. Of course, his feud with Randy Orton, we got to remake that as well. And Tris Stratus, I'm planning on doing uh, the whole Victoria feud from 2002. I'm really intrigued by the idea itself, and I want to do it. All right, that's the video. I had fun making this. It was one of my favorites to remake. You know, I was very entertained. It didn't feel as hard as other videos, but it was very enjoyable. All right, what did you guys think of this feud? Please comment down below. That's your first video. Make sure you hit a unprettier on the like button, and perhaps the insecure in the subscribe button. Peace. I'm out.